Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Yellow Brick Therapy Podcast. This is episode number eight, and I am your host, Jenny Helms, waking up with a cup of coffee and hoping to get this show on the road. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about perfectionism, how we can accomplish our New Year's goals without shame. And before we get into that topic, which is a very important topic to me, an overcoming perfectionist, I wanted to discuss a little bit about Soma Recovery. Now, Soma Recovery is opening up in Wichita February 1st, and it is a holistic health and recovery center that specializes in eating disorders, trauma, substance abuse, and integrated mental health. We provide higher levels of care for eating disorders, innovative and effective trauma therapy treatments, and integrated approach that, approaches that can't be found anywhere else in Wichita and the surrounding areas, at least not all in one building together. Um, I know for a lot of my eating disorder clients, unfortunately, I've had to send them several hours away, if not even states away, to get treatment. And so we're going to be offering some intensive outpatient programming so they don't have to travel so far when they're in some of their transitions um, from inpatient treatment. The other thing, too, is I have been really, really getting into trauma work lately because I've just found that at the root of 99.9% of what I'm seeing in therapy is trauma and how we can effectively not only treat trauma from you know the cognitive behavioral therapy model, which I feel like is a has been kind of pushed in our field for so, so long, but also how we can dig deep and help heal trauma in the body. And as a field, we are still growing and learning in that area, myself included, but I am am willing and open to trying new things and integrating different treatments and keeping data just for myself um, to understand what's effective, what's working, how can we help people not only know that they're not like in a traumatic situation and kind of gain that insight and awareness, but how can we let their bodies know that too so that they can live their life without being so reactive to things that they're confused as to why they're so reactive and, you know, not so dysregulated in their own bodies. But anyway, I could talk about that for an entire podcast and probably at some point will. But for today, I wanted to go back into an old blog of mine that I created, which was titled Being Okay With Good Enough from a Recovering Perfectionist. Now, admittedly, I really struggle with accepting good enough or being okay at things, even to this day. And especially when I was first recovering from things, that was a really hard notion for me. Um, I guess, you know, because of my own stuff, I was very tied to wanting to be, you know, perfect and wanting to not have anything that could be vulnerable. And, you know, this idea of being better than, which is, again, you know, part of my own stuff um, that, again, accepting good enough and being okay was hard. And I have noticed a desire in myself over time to work as hard as I can be to be as good as I can be at every venture that I try without setting realistic boundaries, limits, or having much grace for myself in that process. And the results you know, I've struggled with overachieving and perfectionist, and I called it this, what I, what I titled it was the overachiever perfectionist mode, or OPM, um, and it leaves me feeling exhausted, depressed, and inadequate. So that's kind of like the cycle that I see in myself, and I've also seen that in clients as well. And so knowing that I have this tendency for OPM, I have worked really hard over the last, I said two to three years, but now it's, I guess, been four or five years probably, um, to be more intentionally, slowly and surely better at being okay and okay with being okay and saying no to myself when I try to take on too much all at once. You know, in, in this moment in my life too, I work on entrepreneurial projects and I I'm opening a business and I'm also still doing therapy full time. And I'm also still trying to learn as I do this. And I, I'm a CrossFitter and I have a dog. And so there's all sorts of different things that I'm involved with in my life. And I have to be really cautious about the expectations and goals I set for myself and remember to be grateful for the progress I've made in the meantime. Even this past weekend, kind of bringing now into the relevant part of it, I noticed that 
I went to two different events and they were very fun. I really enjoyed both of them. However, with all the things I have on my plate, you know, sometimes social priorities kind of have to take um, like a back seat or at least social priorities that are a bit more exhausting. You know, being able to say no to that is also very important. So I took note of that even this past weekend and told myself this weekend, I'm going to have at least two nights that I do not go out and I just stay in and cuddle with my dog and just really try to recoup because that's very important to me and my own personal well-being. As I've gone on this journey, one of the most helpful quotes that's resonated in my mind when I start going on this overachieving binge is, we will never fully arrive. If we think we have arrived, we are already far off course. That is a powerful quote for me because although it may seem like um, a little daunting because we never arrive, there is a lot of hope for me in that and acceptance and grace and the fact that it's okay to not arrive. It's okay to be on a journey and that we'll constantly be on a journey as humans. That's part of our humanity. And so I guess after some time, I really started to to get more into the thought process of why not enjoy this journey and start trusting myself. One of the things I've done as well is I kind of look over my life in five-year periods or even 10-year periods versus looking at my life even year to year. And in that, I start to see my progress and I can be proud of myself. There are ways that I've gotten better at different things, and I've probably slid back in a few different things too. But it's been nice to be able to see that there has been growth and that I'm doing okay, even though my brain at times struggles to feel like it's good enough. And getting back into this vlog, it's funny because most of my own big whys for setting certain goals is to become more of the person I think I want to be because I believe it will make me happier, more in touch with my healthier self, more at peace, and better able to serve others. But ironically, when I get into my overachiever perfectionist mode, which I believe will help me achieve said inner peace, all of that goes out the window, and I lose sight of my whole purpose and drift farther from happiness, peace, and being attuned to others. I don't know if you guys have witnessed that in your own lives, but I've definitely seen that for myself. For this reason, I have set lower expectations and practiced being grateful for the good enough. This year, I probably won't progress as much in CrossFit as I'd hoped to or in all of my entrepreneurial projects because my main focus is on building SOMA recovery. If I'm able to be more present with all of those things, I will feel good enough and grateful that I'm still a part of my CrossFit community because I really, really enjoy it. And that I'm still able to feed the entrepreneur side of me, albeit if it's with slow progress. I'll also embrace when I don't get the chance to blog because my day is so incredibly hectic or a client is in crisis or when I submit a podcast late. The whole point of this blogging, podcasting thing is for me to document and learn as I grow and learn from other people and hopefully for that to be something that is inspiring and helpful for you in your own journey of growth. So this year, I really want to encourage my fellow perfectionist for those who <laughs> who tolerate us or those who just struggle to feel good enough that we can slowly, you know, give ourselves permission to be okay at things with things as they are today to be grateful for the baby steps along the way and have grace for the moments that we fall and fail. Especially now that I know a lot of people are setting New Year's resolutions and I think we have these great intentions and these lofty goals and then we set out to do them and if we make one mistake some or misstep, some of us, we fall off that bandwagon because we lose our mojo and we fall into the shame trap and We're mad at ourselves that our, you know, steps are not huge monstrous steps and they're just baby steps. But I really encourage you to have grace for yourself in those moments and to try to not fall into that shame cave. 
because I know that in doing this in my own life, I've been able to grow a bunch more in the long run in my own professional and personal journey, which has been full of failing and spiraling into the shame cave, realizing I'm spiraling into the shame cave, and doing things even when I really doubt myself. Here's to another imperfect, failureful journey of growth in 2019. I hope you guys are able to give yourself some grace and be okay with the good enough stuff. Um, I highly recommend Brene Brown's work. She's been very inspiring to me in my own personal journey and also my professional journey. Next week, we're going to be talking a little bit more about shame resilience, and I will have a speaker, so I'm very excited about that, Um, and also in the upcoming weeks as well. But I did want to give you guys a message for this week, and I hope you guys are having an awesome 2019 so far. I will be tuning in with you soon. Take care.